Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Today, we're talking about one of the very interesting Mosin tales that's out there, and it involves this Finnish M27 rifle. Now, the tale basically says that these rifles, in particular the M27 Finnish model, has a specially designed trigger, and it's a different design from other Mosins. So, really, today we're going to try to answer two questions. One, do these rifles actually have a different trigger than a standard Mosin? And two, if so, could that trigger work in any Mosin Nagant? All right. So, uh, for a lot of y'all are probably wondering, who maybe are already familiar with this tale, uh, actually, yes, to the second question, it will work in any Mosin. But first, I'm going to show you what it is, and then we're going to talk about, and I'll show you why. So here is a standard Mosin Nagant trigger. Now, a lot of y'all will recognize this particular one from our Evapo Rust video. This is our Remington trigger. They're cleaned up really nicely. This is a standard Mosin trigger. Basically, the way these guys work is that you take your trigger spring, which is this guy, and he goes through here, and then this guy screws into the receiver, and then there's a little pin that goes through here that holds it, the trigger in place. And then this right here is your sear, and then when you pull the trigger, it drops the sear, which engages with the cocking piece right here. It drops that, and then the cocking piece goes forward and fires off around. So this is a standard trigger used pretty much by every single Mosin Nagant variant, basically interchangeable. Uh, really cool thing, right? Okay, now, what is an M27 trigger? That is this. Now you're gonna see here there's a few differences. Now we're looking at the actual trigger itself for now. We can see here the M27 trigger, it's a little bit of a different hump here in the back. And it doesn't have this standard pinhole right here. And I think this is a cause of a little bit of confusion. Well, if this is uh, the pin that goes through the receiver to hold the trigger in place, and this doesn't have that, how does this work? This is a really confusing and baffling thing until we actually see how it works. Okay. Um, now... Before we get into it, one thing I want to mention with these triggers is if you're going to buy one of these, you need to be a little bit careful. Okay, and here's why. I, in order to show you why you need to be careful when buying one of these triggers, I'm going to get a little bit of a punch, and I'm just going to push out this pin right here. Now, a lot of these are just barely in there. Some of them, like this one, though, you may need a little bit of coaxing. I didn't even need the hammer though. See, all right, so that pin falls out. This is why you need to be careful. The M27 trigger has a special sear, a special trigger spring, is this guy. Now, notice, what's the difference here? This is a standard garden variety Mosin Nagant uh, trigger spring. Like, pretty much all of them have this identical one. This is unique to the Finnish M27 rifle. We can see there's one big difference here which is this guy has this crazy little extra hump of metal with a hole through it. And we're gonna see why this is important here. But when you're buying one of these, you need to make sure that the M27 trigger comes with this special sear, okay? If you don't have this sear, this is going to be basically almost entirely useless. And we're gonna look at why here. So. Let me set this guy uh, to the side here for now. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in, though. Right, so I just have to line up that and then just kind of slot that pin through. Just like that. Look at that. I didn't even need the hammer to get it back in. Okay. This Again, this is really confusing until we see how it works in a gun. Now, to show you how this works in a gun, I have this, our trusty... Yugoslavian PU sniper barreled action. And this is going to be a great test hub for trying out these triggers. Okay, 
Now, um, real quick, because this is really fast and easy to do, I'm going to show you the standard trigger, right? So this is really simple. Basically, you just line this up here, and then you would put the pin through here, and then you'd put your... Uh, now, I don't have the pin handy, but that's okay, because we're not going to actually try to shoot this or anything. But I put my screw in here. Okay. Now, now see what happens is the pin goes through here, okay? And that helps hold this trigger in place. Now, if I lose that pin, what's going to happen is this trigger is going to just, like, wobble about all over the place. See that? This is not what you want in, a, in any type of rifle that you're actually planning on using for really anything, this is not good. Okay. So let me take this out here, and you'll see why I don't have a pin in here in a second. We're going to go ahead and take this guy out, and then I'm going to put our M27 trigger in here. Now, a lot of y'all might already notice this is not a finished M27. But, as you're about to see, that's perfectly okay. So remember, what we do here, we take this guy... We set our trigger on here. We put our screw through here. Just like that. Look at that. Okay. Now, remember on our last one we had all that weird wobbling about. Now this is really fascinating. On this one, I'm look at this. The, there's no wobble. It's like magic. The trigger's not moving up and down, back and forth anywhere. And as we can see there, I can already feel a two-stage trigger. Because see, what happens is, let me get my focus there a little better. What happens is, there's a little bit of slack here, and I'll pull it, and then there's a stop. Then from there is the pull, so it's like, it's, I can already feel that's a two-stage. So to try this, I'm going to first do a visual inspection and a physical one. Yes, we are clear. So then what I'm going to do is take my trusty Mosin-Nagant bolt. I'm going to put it in here. And then we're going to try out this trigger. Now, remember, anytime you want to do this, make sure the gun is unloaded and pointed in a safe direction. In this instance, uh, we have both of those things. So we're clear to try this. So you'll notice here when I, when I um, pull this back... See, there's some slack there, and then BAM! Look at that. Yeah, we're still clear. And I don't have this tightened all the way, so this time I can actually tighten this. Because the, the tightness of this will actually impact the uh, strength and the resistance of this spring. Alright, let's try it again. Just to be double sure, yes, we are clear. Better safe than sorry, folks. Okay. Yep, yeah, so it works. That's amazing. Now, you'll notice here that we don't have that pin, and there's really no way that we could have a pin here because there's no hole in the trigger to put this in. And that's what's so baffling about this. It, it, the thing is... The pin isn't what holds this in. It's that little hole in the trigger uh, trigger spring itself because with that in there, the trigger spring, right, is affixed to the receiver from this screw. So the trigger spring can't move anywhere. And the trigger itself is pinned to the trigger spring. So it can't move up this way. It can only pivot on that hinge like here, right? So that's the whole ingenious of this design. It's actually a really clever design. And I'd like to do some experiments with shooting because I think this can make a really big difference. Now, it's going to depend, again, like any trigger, how nice it actually is will depend on the geometry of how the sear interfaces with the bottom of this cocking piece right here, right? So different bolts are still going to interface differently, theoretically, with this trigger. However, in general, this is probably going to give you a nicer trigger pull than potentially your standard, let's say, refurbished 9130 or something like that. Uh, it, even if you don't, uh, even if you buy one of these and put it in a rifle, 
this is still a really interesting thing to have around because this is a unique design to only this, and there's not a lot of Mosin parts like this um, that have unique designs unto themselves. So this is a really cool oddity, and it's one that actually works and is uh, backwards compatible with any Mosin. This is a really neat thing. Now, just to give you an example, I'm going to take this guy back out, and we're going to try the other M27 trigger. We're going to show you why that is no bueno. And something to look out for. Okay, so here's the one we just took out of the rifle. And then we have this guy. Now, can any of y'all tell the difference between this and this? Maybe not. This can be really confusing. This is another M27 trigger that I bought. And this is re this is, can be really tricky for the buyer. See this trigger spring right here? See how it's like this ruby purple color? That means it's a finish made trigger. So this whole thing looks correct, except there's one big problem. Let me take this pin out here and I'll show you. The big problem is that this is a standard Mosin Nagant trigger spring. It doesn't have that hump with a hole through it that we can put this pin through. Okay, but you can't actually tell that unless you pull this out and look at it. This is why you have to be careful when buying one of these. Now, this one I got from that M27 parts kit we took a look at uh, earlier in the summer of 2021. And it makes sense that you'd get an M27 trigger from an M27 parts kit. Now, this one, I think was being sold and advertised as an M27 trigger, and I, I can't remember if it came with this or not. I, I, but a lot of them a lot of them may, and this is one thing you have to be careful, <laughs> just be careful for. It's really nice to be able to look at one of these in person. Unfortunately, most of the time it's online. So understand that if you're buying one of these, there is a risk that this is not actually an M27 uh, sear trigger spring, however you want to call this piece. So that's something to consider. Now the way this works is, this is annoying, right? I can actually still install it here. So you look here, right? There's still enough room where I can put that pin through there. See that? So even though there's that, yeah, but see now I have all this play. Let's go ahead and put this back in the rifle. This is going to be a little bit problematic. Kind of like what we saw with our first trigger we put in here. Because see, now the only difference between this one and the one we just had, remember this one worked perfectly, is that this one is no longer directly connected to the sear. So it can just wobble around back and forth like that. This, this is not good. Absolutely not. And if we look down there, I mean, the trigger is the bolt hold open. It doesn't even look like it's protruding up far enough to even act as a bolt hold open. Uh, in fact, the only thing that could even potentially keep the bolt open here is the sear. And if you have a Mosin Nagant and the sear is your bolt hold open, uh, or I guess your bolt stop, excuse me, eee, you've, got, you've got problems. Unfortunately, uh, which I'll explain in a, another video later, this actually isn't the first time I've had this problem. Um, in fact, I had an issue where the bolt was closed and I couldn't get the bolt out because the trigger spring was bent. And because it was bent, the uh, sear was protruding up so far that the sear itself was acting as the bolt stop. Not really a situation you want to get into. Okay, so what have we learned today? Well. One thing we've learned, right, the M27 Mosin Nagant has a specially designed trigger from Finland that's really handy and can give your rifle a really nice two-stage feel while still being like in a historically original part. Like this is probably from the 1930s most likely or late 1920s. Uh, so a lot of people like the, uh, the Timney triggers. And those are really cool, but, you know, that's not like a historically correct part, which some people care about. So if you, if you like historically accurate parts, but you're still wanting a nicer trigger, this may be something to look out for, because this is really cool. 
And the other thing we've learned is that, remember, this will work in any Mosin. However, uh, because all Mosins are different, you can put this in 10 different guns and have 10 different trigger weights. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. But in general, this should give you a nicer trigger pull altogether. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about these Finnish M27 triggers. And let me know if y'all have any prayer requests. And I'll see you next time.